So, um, so my name is Sarah. Um, I'm the student wellbeing manager for Torrens University. Um, so a big part of my role is overseeing the student engagement, wellbeing, um, and all aspects of the, the student community. So I feel pretty privileged to work closely with our students, mainly through the student representative councils. Um, and help to empower the student voice by assisting in the facilitation of their ideas and, and insights. Um, so this ultimately informs many of the initiatives, not only within my space, but within the wider organization too. Um, so Torrens is a relatively young university. Uh, we have campuses in Adelaide, Melbourne, um, Sydney, Blue Mountains, Lura, um, Brisbane, New Zealand, and a campus in China. Um, and we offer a range of courses from business, hospitality, design, health, and education. Um, you know, Torrens is, is, is particularly committed to embedding this culture of student as, as partners. And it's something that I'm personally very passionate, passionate about being part of. Um, the issue of, of having multiple campuses though does present certain challenges, um, but we're finding that through uh, continued collaboration with our varied and diverse cohort of students, we're beginning to see positive changes come about. So today we'll be talking to you a little more about this exciting journey that we've embarked on from, um, from our staff and student perspectives and where we hope to elevate the student voice even, even further. So I'm going to hand over to Josephine um, to offer our welcome to country and to introduce the rest of the team. Hi everyone, thanks Sarah. Um, before I begin my part though, I um, just wanted to double check, Sarah, do you have the slides up or am I the only one that can't see them? The slides are, oh, I didn't hit share, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Okay, perfect. No, I just wanted to make sure before we went through the whole thing, um, no, we didn't have good. slides. Thank for you for that. <laughs> no, no, that's all good. All right, so hi everyone. Um, my name is Josephine and I am the Student Community Coordinator um, at Torrens University. So I've been in this role for around four months now. All right, so before we begin the proceedings, um, I would like to acknowledge, oh, I would like to acknowledge oh, the slides have just disappeared, Sarah. Yeah, yeah, they'll, I'll, they'll bring perfect. them back. Also, oh, good. Anyway, I'll carry on. I would like to acknowledge and pay respect to the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today. Uh, for the other speakers and myself, we are joining you from Gurungai Country, Gadigal Land, Gorna Country, Stone, Stony Creek Nation, and Nam Country. Uh, as we share our own knowledge, teaching, learning, and research practices within this university, may we also pay respect to the knowledge embedded forever within the Aboriginal custodianship of country. Awesome, next slide, perfect. Um, so kicking off, here is our symposium presentation abstract. I won't get too into it um, as you'll be hearing all about it very soon as we continue along through the presentation. But in a nutshell, what we're really here to do today is to highlight and provide transparency around the work that Torrens University is doing to bring together um, the student community and provide opportunities for them to share their ideas, concerns and opinions in a meaningful way, um, as well as open up discussion around what we're doing as an institution with everyone here today. Um, and presenting with us today, we have a panel of amazing students, um, Juno Choi, Chloe Hilaire, Jessica Delos Reyes, Tan Lam Ho, Evan Karras, and Simon Halgath Jolly, um, who will also introduce themselves as they come up. So there are a number of ways that we're working to uh, provide these opportunities for increased student participation. Um, and we'll be speaking to these over the course of the presentation with the academic board representatives and the student representative councils being the obvious, obvious primary platforms. Um, however, this year we've introduced a number of ambassador programs, not only in my space of student community, but also through customer service, service design and in our uh, social enterprise. So in addition to this, we're striving to ensure that we have student representation in both our internal working groups and with our external partners. So this work um, kicked off with the um, development of our student voice policy. So this started back in September 2021 with a discussion paper for feedback. Um, the policy is currently being drafted um, and will go for academic board review at the end of the year. So I know that there's a fair bit on this slide, but essentially for us, the, the key messages um, from the discussion paper um, for us are really about creating this sense of belonging and community with our students. 
and that we're striving to create this culture of students as partners, but we also understand that we have a responsibility to offer the training and support that will give our students the skills and confidence to effectively communicate their messages. So at this point, I'm gonna hand over to Simon. Um, he's a current Bachelor of Counselling student and former student representative on the academic board. Hi everyone, yeah, so um, <clears throat> as Sarah mentioned, uh, I, I, I've, I'd been on the uh, academic board for the last uh, two years. Um, as the uh, the Think Education member, we have we have three members, one for sort of each branch of the university, and and we also have a student member of the Learning and Teaching Committee as well. Um, and those roles are the representative roles, but uh, but we also have the opportunity to uh, to express ourselves as individuals and bring our own uh, sort of knowledge and experience um, to the role as well. Um, and uh, it was a little bit of an intimidating experience to, to begin with, I guess not, not having sort of any work experience uh, in higher education, but everyone was very, uh, very welcoming and, uh, and respectful of us and um, our, um, you know, our, our feedback and our questions were, uh, were always very respectfully uh, addressed and, and often did, did result in action and being taken. Um, uh, we, which was which was great. It's nice to be able to, uh, you know, to to contribute and feel like you're making a difference. Um, so as part of our role, uh, we we sort of stay involved with with the they, they like us to either be SRC members or at least um, involved with the SRC. I, I wasn't an SRC member, but I attended the. Um, uh, we have every trimester we have an SRC summit where all the SRC members from around Australia and New Zealand get, get together. So I was always present at those. Um, so any issues that the SRC wanted raised with the board, people could talk to me uh, about that and I would pass on, we, we would pass on that feedback. Um, and yeah, I guess I, I was encouraged to, to join the, the academic board just because I, I really um, love the culture at, at Torrens. It's, it really is very student centred and, and it sounds obvious, but um, and, and I imagine they're, you know, sometimes you hear that sort of thing and you think, oh yeah, but it, 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 they really mean it at, at Torrens. And uh, and so I was sort of excited to, to have an opportunity to be part of, of maintaining and, and developing that culture. Um, and, uh, you yeah, know, and I really feel like I've, I've been able to do that uh, in the role. Um, we've also had other opportunities uh, to be involved in, um, uh, in, in sort of consultation opportunities. So I'm, I'm one of the students that was involved in the development of the student uh, voice policy. Um, and that's a, that's a really exciting development. That's just sort of further formalizing, uh, you know, the roles of the SRC and, and, and the people on the, uh, on the academic board um, and just ensuring um, that uh, any feedback is always responded to and, and that sort of thing. There's, there's a lot of great stuff in there. Um, so we're really excited to, uh, um, to see that come to fruition. Um, there's all, we've also been involved in things like learning and teaching symposiums where students and, and teachers get together um, and, and discuss, uh, uh, you know, I guess sort of the nuts and bolts of classroom issues and, and that sort of thing. And all that feedback gets passed on and, and, and gets acted on. Uh, and we, all, we always hear back, which is, which is really great um, for, from whichever way that we, um, you know, are, are giving feedback whether, and there's, annual surveys and things like that too. And, uh, you know, we, we always, um, you know, hear what happens as, as a result of the of the feedback that's given. Um, there's also been some focus groups and we also had a, um, a working group uh, to uh, help offshore online students uh, feel more engaged in part of the student community, which was a particular issue during, during COVID with all the, when students couldn't, you know, couldn't come to Australia. Um, and uh, yeah, so we've, we've had some really good results um, uh, from all of that. Uh, that, for example, the universities employed um, students um, uh, to provide sort of student services support in the in the student Facebook group uh, that we created, because quite often people come there looking for uh, looking for support. Um, so that's been a a really good development. Um, and the uh, the uni's also worked hard based on our feedback to. Um, uh, communicate uh, better both via email and, and with the student hub um, 
uh, just some you know refinements and, and better information on there uh, for us. Um, yeah, and then, and then we've got the student voice policy. So um, yeah, it's 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 uh, you know any students out there, you know, I, I really encourage them to to, to get involved um, in governance or. Uh, on any boards they can they can get on with the university or within the SRC. It's uh, it's definitely worth it. Um, you know, you, you meet people, both students and and within the administration as well. Um, and and it's just just a lot of good experience. It builds your confidence in in you know de dealing with these kinds of things. And um, so yeah, I can't recommend it highly enough. Awesome. So touching base on our SRC, we have created initiatives directly in relation to student feedback. Um, so we have a list there, but some takeaways from this space um, is that we have done a rebrand to nationally align all of our SRCs across our campuses um, for greater connection. We hold a SRC summit twice a trimester to further promote that collaboration and transparency. Um, and we are also looking more in depth into the value add for our SRC um, through developing training and support that is consistent across our campuses. Uh, so for example, we are working on a learning module which integrates our smart skills digital badges to promote their professional development. Uh, hello everyone. So my name is Lam and I'm currently a student experience ambassador and I'm also an SRC member for Adelaide campus. So getting the chances to participate in the focus group, I am delighted that we have created a strong collaborations among the SRC communities across campuses. Uh, so together we're making sure that SRC members values of tolerance are equal and respected no matter where they are located. We also inform um, and discuss ideas to each other through the Discord platform to maintain consistent communications in general. So in summary, I think that developing collaborations and uh, consistency has successfully unified all different SRC campuses and brought our communities together as well as closer. So I'm going to hand over to Jess for the next part. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jessica. I am also a student experience ambassador and part of the SRC here in Melbourne. Um, I was also president of the SRC back at my first campus in Sydney before transitioning and being an active member at another Sydney campus. So experiencing both cities have definitely assisted me in how to help integrate and support the big idea of one community while embracing the differences of each city. Uh, so a number of events and activities are planned on a national scale, some of which are highly subsidized in addition to campus specific activities. Uh, so as you can see, there are a lot of pics here of our national day trips, which happen every trimester, where students get to travel and experience a destination within their state. The fact that these amazing experiences are highly subsidized make these fantastic opportunities for students. Uh, for example, for, student, for international students to experience snow for the first time, for students to take a luxury cruise down Murray River, go wine tasting in the Hunter Valley, rock climbing on heritage listed cliffs. So you can imagine these are our most successful events. And we also have our smaller fun and social activities such as jet boating. Uh, we also have Be Good, Be Well every um, trimester. So it is a national focus on student well-being for one week through events and activities like talks on how to utilize your brain, music therapy, meditation, and paint and sip on campus. Uh, this year, we have also partnered with Unisport for the first time uh, with the thought that building community is an important component in increasing participation in sport. So seeing success in Adelaide with high participation in South Australia Challenge and here in Melbourne, we are aiming to see uh, sports activities happen on all of our campuses. And now I will pass on to Chloe. Hi everyone, I'm Chloe. I'm studying a Bachelor of Health Science Clinical Nutrition and I've been a Student Experience Ambassador with Torrens since November 2021. So we have various ambassador programs in the community space as well as design. Um, firstly, we have the Service Design Ambassadors who created My Hub platform, an intuitive information hub. And then we have the Engagement Ambassadors that work with the engagement team providing peer-to-peer -peer support. And then we have the student experience ambassadors 
who work in the student community space to assist with community management of Torrens social media via peer-to-peer -peer support, as well as facilitating the student voice podcast, the student newsletter, and while working closely with the SRC. We also act as student representatives for the student voice in internal working groups and with our external partners. So the outcome of the ambassador roles is to increase the connection and give authenticity as peer-to-peer -peer interactions are often received better. So I'm now going to hand over to Evan, who will talk about the Mentor Connect opportunities. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chloe. Hi, everyone. My name is Evan. Um, I am the president of the SRC in South Australia, and I also work as a student mentor um, with our business students, but also with some of our international students. So one platform that we have here at Torrens that works really effectively is something we call Mentor Connect, where we um, hook up mentees, so international students who are just arriving in Australia, who might not know where to go, who need some help in, I guess, navigating their way through a brand new city, especially when it comes to things like accommodation and jobs. And we try and um, hook them up with mentors who have already either been through that process or can provide some sort of advice. And this is a wonderful program. Currently, we have over 50 active uh, mentors and there are about 550 M uh, mentees. And we see between 25 and 30 different conversations happening through the platform every single week. And this is an ongoing thing. So it's not something which just happens at the beginning of a term or beginning of a trimester. Students are constantly reaching out to their mentor and asking for advice on where to go for this or where to go for that. And it's not necessarily only about navigating their way through the, um, to the systems and the services that we have at our university at Torrens, but also in general. So a lot of the students who have come here after COVID are not sure where to go to get some supermarket food or how to get a transit card or anything like that. And the mentors provide this wonderful service by trying to assist our international students in customizing themselves to, to, um, to whatever city they've moved to. We also have a, a social enterprise hub at Torrens University, which is doing a wonderful job working with, particularly with social enterprises all around Australia. Um, we have an internship program where we actually ask students to intern, to, to use their work hours that they need to qualify for part of their degrees and actually intern within the hub to actually work with each other on projects for social enterprises and then deliver the project result back to the client and say to the client, this is what our students have delivered. And the client obviously has the choice whether to implement the project or not, but we have seen great success in that. So we currently have about 180 different projects that we're working within our social enterprise hub. And there are four to five students that are working on each of those projects across subjects and also across the interns as well, which is a wonderful thing. So our students are really succeeding in the social enterprise hub and are doing very well. And this is another way where students can get together and exchange ideas talk about what's happening at university, offer themselves some assistance. It also provides a great platform for students to improve their well-being as well. We find that students who are integrating with each other on projects, sometimes outside of the university in the Social Enterprise Hub, but also in the Mentor Connect program, are finding themselves getting a lot better. They're doing better grades, they're being more motivated, and they're really starting to access the services that we have at university to, uh, to try and improve their well-being. I'll now pass off to... It's Sarah. Uh, no, Evan, it would be myself. Jen, I'll pass over to you. Thank you. <laughs> All good. Yeah. Hi, um, hi everyone. Um, my name's uh, you know, but everyone just calls me Jen. Um, I'm also a student experience ambassador at Torrens, uh, but my main role is as um, SRC president uh, for online students. Um, I'm a Bachelor of Business and Event Management, uh, fully studying online. I really just want to briefly touch about student participation, uh, both externally and in internally. And um, one of the things with Torrent being uh, a fairly young institution, uh, we've sort of, we're still learning uh, along the way on what the best approach in terms of uh, student participation and I guess because we are such a young institution we aren't sort of burdened by some of the hurdles from some of the old institutions where they might have limitations or traditions which sort of uh, don't include uh, student participation as much so one of the things that we try to do is get a uh, 
students involved uh, in various things externally, whether that be things like uh, Hexa's uh, um, community practice. Uh, one example is the uh, uh, is the SASH uh, community practice, which I'm uh, part of, uh, but also uh, things like SVA in terms of uh, student voice Australia in terms of our ability to learn from other institutions, but also uh, to share our experiences as well. And more recently in new uh, uni sports to be able to um, just to enhance that connection with other universities. Uh, from an internal point of view, we uh, we have a range of ways that uh, we encourage student participation uh, from our VC meetings, which are, are really close and intimate meetings that we have with the vice chancellor, sort of uh, where nothing is off the agenda, um, but we really have that opportunity to, to have that heart to heart conversation. And often because you don't have the other levels of structure, you're really having that conversation right with. So, uh, with the senior levels of management, so nothing really gets in the way, um, which is really important from us uh, to make sure that we're getting our message across uh, to um, to the vice chancellor. Um, a particular interest is my, uh, what I'm also involved in is the mental health and uh, safe for communities action group, because um, I think it's really important for student engagement to be part of that conversation and actively be involved and that's from all levels uh where we discuss issues such as uh the right way things are reported uh things around training um to enhance uh, everyone's understanding of things like consent and cultural competencies but in essence there, there are a whole number of um ways that we try to uh, get involved, but I think it's really important for us uh, that we have that in engagement and participation at all levels. And I believe, Evan, you're making a quick comment on some of the student-led initiatives. Yeah, thank you very much, Jim. So just quickly again, everyone, um, another thing that we do, we we really try to engage our students into asking them what well-being activities they would like, but also more importantly, what well-being means to them. So I think it's all well and good for us to sit here and tell students what well-being is, but by asking the students, what does well-being mean to you, we can then cater and design programs to assist them. One thing that we've done here in South Australia, which is where I'm from, is speak to our international students predominantly, where there can be a bit of a stigma around some of the mental health issues and certainly around well-being, and say, what does it mean to you? What would you like us to do for you? And by resounding demand, we've had a lot of students say, we would love to be able to get together on campus or, fake or online, whatever it is, and just chat. Just chat about stuff. It doesn't have to be about anything in particular, just somewhere we can unload and talk about anything that's not university orientated. So what we're devising here, we're going to pilot this program here in South Australia, but certainly implement it nationally uh, in 2023, is a student wellbeing club. And we're not quite sure what the name is going to be yet, but where we just ask the students to get together, and it could be a very casual chat, and we could be playing games, we're watching a movie, but just something to get the students away from their university life where they can just relax and talk about wellbeing if they want to. We also want to incorporate some um, mental health aspects into the club as well by inviting counsellors and professionals to actually come in maybe once a month or so and talk about things that students are interested in. How do we cope with anxiety when we're studying in our exams and timetables? How can we cope with these things? How do we reduce the stigma around mental health? So that's the one thing initially that we're following here in SA that we'll be implementing in a couple of weeks time. I think it's just a, a, a small club, but then taking it nationally uh, next year. Thank you. Alrighty, nearly there, everyone. Thanks, Evan. Um, so after hearing about all of these things, um, and even with the ground that we have made, of course, there are always going to be challenges, especially as we work across um, different campuses and engage with a variety of different stakeholders too. So one of the main challenges that we face is awareness or the lack of it, um, of what we and our students are working on and are putting out there. In relation to that, engagement is also a challenge as we're not um, as not really seeing the numbers or attendance that we would like to across our campuses. As for other challenges, we're also concerned around closing the feedback loop to our students, um, how we use our available resources, um, and how do we visibly measure our success or failure or what impact we have. 
So definitely there are a lot of key challenges we're facing and working through, but of course we'd love to learn from um, others and everyone here too. So um, we don't have the answers to any of those questions yet, um, but essentially our next steps for 2023 will be to, um, I, I guess we've, we've, we've kind of done things a little bit back to front in that we started working in this space really by solving the simplest problems first, um, essentially the quick fixes. Um, you know, we realized that, that the last year of work is not unique and it's not particularly groundbreaking. However, it was a necessary starting point for, for moving forward with this. So once we have the student voice policy finalized at the end of this year, the primary focus certainly within my team for the beginning of next year will be to, um, to kind of pull together all the work that we've done into a, a more formalized strategic framework, which is why I was so excited with Elizabeth's presentation before. Um, and and essentially, essentially use this to guide how we amplify the student voice further, um, how we can um, increase student-led um, initiatives that promote diversity, safety, and well-being for our students, um, but then also how we can look to increase the reach across the organisation. And so for us, it's, it's critical to kind of identify how we can feed back this information to the wider student body outside of those highly engaged students you see before you um, and kind of close the feedback loop. So look, in addition, we'll, as always, we'll be guided by our students. Um, we'll hopefully gain some valuable lessons and insights through our partnership with Student Voice Australia um, and our participation in events such as this. Hopefully learn from other universities a little further along the journey than us. So that concludes our presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, everybody. Now we've only got a few minutes left, but the next workshop isn't till 2.30. So we do have some time for questions if people are available to hang around. Over to the floor if anyone has any questions. I have a question if there's none. Um, I was interested about, you spoke about the SRC using Discord as their communication platform. Um, can you tell me a bit about how you made the decision to choose that platform? And is it only peer-to-peer -peer or is there engagement with staff through the platform as well? I'm happy to speak to this one. Um, so there was some debate around which platform this should be and with six different SRCs, you can imagine it was hotly debated between Teams, Facebook, Discord. So, uh, and that, that conversation was initiated by me when I, when I first started a year ago. And then because we couldn't, we couldn't come to a decision, I left it. And then the students between themselves worked it out and they came back and that's where they landed with Discord. So there are a few key staff members that are in there, um, but essentially that platform is for students to engage with students. As a staff member, um, I don't use it unless I need um, content for the podcast or something that relates to their space that they're in anyway. Um, and that's essentially what it's for is an opportunity for them to have those dialogues outside of anything being instigated by my team or, or any other staff member. So. Well, that's really interesting. Thank you. Because, yeah, we had um, an initial approach to our um, SRC or our Senate at USC and we landed on Teams, but Discord was kind of our other option. And, yeah, I understand that everyone has their own preference. And How did, how did you land on Teams then? Did you have a, a vote? Because I don't imagine it was unanimous. I'm just interested in the process. No, it wasn't. Um we mainly chose it because we we needed a platform that could engage with staff as well. Um, and that was one that was a little bit more, I guess, one that staff members, we could control who was in and out of it from the student's perspective as reps came and went. So it was, and also employability was one um, that we spoke about with that platform, learning teams that then they could take that to. Um, to their workplace afterwards.